Hi everyone, it's Chris. Welcome back to my parlour. And today I'm going to do a reading that I haven't done for a while, but I thought I would give it a go and see what might happen. Because um, I haven't done them for a while. But I read this book. And it's very interesting. Because you know I like to read now. It's one of my when, my when becomes now um, projects to build myself a library and it's been quite successful I've got my little library set up I've read quite a few books over a hundred in the last six months so um, I'm quite pleased and feel quite um, blessed and proud of myself for reading so much in the last few months and I try and read a, a new book every maybe two books a week um, I don't particularly use brand new books uh, or brand new authors but I read what I can 90% of my books come from secondhand shops or book markets um, and the Rotary book market is excellent it's just around the corner from me so I visit them when I um, feel inclined to do so and find lots of books there pretty cheap too for about three or four dollars a book which is excellent in the price of the market this these days and some of the books I especially new ones that I find on recommended um, YouTube um, subscribers that I'm subscribed to there's one particular girl that I'm subscribed to I'll leave her link she's really quite interesting I've um, reserved quite a few books at the library through her um, book haul the other month um, so I get them from the library if I can. If I like them, I will um, purchase them to add to my own collection. Um, but yeah, so I read this one. I found it in an op shop far, far away with my um, tea party girls. I mentioned just a little previous video um, by Minette Walters. It's a dreadful murder two stories are based on true crime and one is an unsolved crime one the perpetrator supposedly the perpetrator there's a bit of confusion there whether or not he actually did it or it's an accidental death but he played a strong part in um, disposing of her body so he was then um, accused of being the murderer and was hung um, but the first uh, story which we will talk about today um, is very quite interesting and I'm going to do a reading on that if I can to find out who actually did it there was someone uh, the murder could have been um, solved but something happened and um, the case went cold. Well, it went cold on purpose because they just closed off the whole investigation because of what happened. So, this is the book and the first story. Well, I found it quite interesting. The story, the second story, mm, maybe it was okay. I haven't read the third one yet, but the third one is not based on a real, um, a real murder. So these are the the. Um, contents so a dreadful murder chicken feed and the tinderbox I'm still in the process of reading the tinderbox I have but that wasn't based on a real murder so so a dreadful murder this is the the premise of it so a dreadful murder is based on the true story of the shooting of mrs. Caroline Lord I think this Lord which took place near the small village of Ligham in Kent, Lytham, something like that, Lytham in Kent, on 24th of August 1908. It remains one of the great unsolved mysteries of the 20th century. Mrs. Lard, Lord, was shot in broad daylight in the grounds of a large country estate called Frankfield House. It's actually a, a summer house. She was nearly 60 years old, came from a wealthy upper-class family and was known in Lycom, Lytham for her charity work with the poor. Her husband, Major General Charles Lard, was a county councillor 
and a justice of the peace. His closest friends were the chief constable of Kent and the local MP. He was nearly 70 at the time of his wife's death. Although no one was ever arrested for the crime, it was believed by many that Charles Lord murdered his wife in cold blood and that his friends helped him escape justice. So that was the story. That was the um, actual murder itself. I don't know whether or not I should tell you the ending um, because it might um, spoil the story if you want to read it yourself. Um, so I won't tell you the ending. Because, but you can find it all online anyway. I've got some links I will leave in the description box if you want to read about the murder. Um, and the true facts one, that's it. Otherwise, it's more to do with the story. Um, Minette Walters wrote it quite well. It read very well. It read more of a factual kind of story and it seemed to be plausible. Her rendition of interactions with those involved in the case. So... It was quite good. I would recommend that one particular story. But chicken feed. Um, I'll tell you what the chicken feed was um, about. Um, it was basically going on a murder. I'll let you know what it was. Um, and you can decide whether or not you want to read that one too. I'll leave again. I'll leave a link for that. But it's not much information about that one. Um, chicken feed is based on a true story of the chicken farm murder which took place on Blackness Road, Crowborough, East Sussex in December 1924. So I'll leave another link for that one if you want to look through. But it's a chicken um, run murder I think it was called rather than chicken farm, chicken run murder um, in 1924. So a long time ago. So first of all I want to find out um, whether... Elizabeth's husband was actually the murderer. So I'm going to put that card through here. Was, um, hmm, was he the murderer? Was he the murderer? Did he get away with it? Hmm. So, so did Charles kill his wife, Caroline? Did Charles kill his wife, Caroline? Did Charles kill his wife, Caroline? He went through a lot of gossip, a lot of the um, well-to-do, um, criticised him and said yes. He was found guilty by public um, public decree, really. He was um, sort of found guilty before he even got um, to trial. So that was a bit rough. So did he actually do it? Was he involved in it? Let's find out. So Caroline, anyone that's coming through that has information about Caroline and her husband Charles, whether or not he was involved in her murder, I personally don't think he did it, um, but let's find out whether he did, whether it came through as that. The Six of Spades, no. He didn't kill her. That's what's coming through here. He was not the murderer of his wife. And the Six of um, Swords, which is the Six of sp as, uh, Spades, it's coming through here. It's the Six of Swords. And, yeah, he did move away <laughs> from it. I won't tell you the ending because it will, it will um, you know, spoil that for you, but you can read about it. But he certainly took a trip of some sort um, in regards to this. But, no, he did not kill her. Mm. It was assumed that he did by public gossip, um, some spiteful public gossip, um, but there was no. Oh, it's, it's interesting. You have to have a look look at the um, story itself to find out. But um, so the six of swords here. It's coming through as you know you're traveling away from from the past into something better. You're living behind all of that. A rigmarole and everything else and making a special trip <laughs> he did make a special trip in regards to all of this which you'll find out about if you read the story and find out what happened um but no he did not kill her and i don't believe he did either um he just could not have 
been in the right place at the right time to do it and in the timing of the incident of where he was and where she was murdered um, so let's find out and see what else is happening she was found on the veranda going up the steps towards the front door of the veranda of the summer house she was um, assaulted with the butt of a, a revolver the police suspect and then shot twice so it was quite a brutal murder and one that sort of comes through is quite harsh really under the circumstances um, a male was involved in this murder <laughs> yes comes out here she did do a lot of charity work she was involved in families in crisis she was involved in families who could not support themselves she was involved with um, families that husbands were either missing in jail um, had been killed during the war and that sort of thing she did hand out money she was quite generous but apparently her generosity had a price tag so she wasn't as generous in her Christian um, charity as one would um, believe because there was a price tag um, that was attached to her generosity so mm, so what's there someone out there in the community who actually bore a grudge because of course Charles was the um, uh, involved in the courts he put people in jail and he was not liked and she provoked perhaps um, some mm, aggravation another male <clears throat> and it's caught up isn't it between the two men and that was considered the prime suspects two men one very um, young and active one who liked to get drunk and was very violent when drunk and the young man who who was a poacher and um, so those two sort of fit in so it seems to be that that's what would have happened I think um, someone resented her her interference perhaps or the price that she attached to her why kill her there and then was the young poacher out and about poaching um, did he call her to the house why was she going up the steps towards the house it was locked when the police came when her body was discovered by her husband he was on his way they were out walking she and her husband after lunch and they went out walking she, he wanted to go and collect his golf bag from the local golf club and she took part of the way with him and they um, separated at a certain point he went off and did his, his thing she continued on her walk and um, met her death at the summer house up the steps of the summer house so did she meet up with a poacher perhaps um, or was it a stranger a complete stranger uh, it's coming through here so let's have a look and find out what else is coming through Caroline can you tell me what happened what happened between you and perhaps the two men this man he I said he was a drunk he beat his wife when he was drunk he had a grudge against both of them he said he did not kill her he did not have anything to do with it but he was very much in cahoots with the poacher he had the same issue he was very young um, he didn't want to be told by a woman about what to do and the things like that so maybe he was sprung poaching who knows what happened Caroline what happened a judgment call a judgment call it's definitely something that 
it was inevitable at one time or another, but this was maybe a time of convenience for whoever it was. He, mm, it's a judgment call. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time, perhaps, and the whole thing was, I don't think, was planned as such, but a, a crime of opportunity, perhaps. Her rings were stolen. Someone pulled off, knew exactly which hand to pull the glove off to steal her rings, and her money belt was t was cut out of her dress and taken. But the rings never turned up in a pawnbroker's or anything else like that. So, hmm. Judgment call. <laughs> the star. It's interesting. Because the star is usually about hope and about um, a belief in a higher good and the belief that you will reach that higher good. But there's still premise here. Mm, that's interesting. Maybe she met up with him hoping he, she could change his, the poacher's lifestyle perhaps. She was judging his lifestyle, hoping to be able to encourage him, to bribe him perhaps, and that's probably what they felt they were being given. They were given a bribe when they gave her money, and he was very resentful of the condition she put on the money that provided support for him, his mother, and younger siblings. He was very disappointed and uh, didn't want to give up drinking um, so she was very judgmental about who she supported and why she supported them hoping perhaps to change them to bring them under Christian values because she was very Christian very a church goer um, very much involved in the church as well as the general society social standing she was um, maybe she was they presented that so I'm thinking yes this seems to be pointing towards um, a crime of um, passion and um, but not pre-planned it was just a crime of of being there in the wrong spot the wrong time for both of them um, for the murderer and for Caroline so it sort of comes interesting doesn't it let's see what well, this is coming through well, the wish card Wish fulfillment card. Why would that come up? It's interesting, isn't it? The wish fulfillment card. Hmm. Why is that coming up, Caroline? Come on. <laughs> Why is that coming up? Her husband was devastated by her death. There was no wish fulfillment here other than. Not having her or her husband um, around again. Um, the judgment. He didn't. The husband didn't take much notice of the poor. Um, didn't get involved with the social aspects of the poor. He just put them in jail if um, need be or punished them in some other way. So he didn't actually try and solve the social issue behind what he was doing. His wife was trying to to change the way the poor interacted, trying to bring them in religion, trying to bring in um, change them to suit herself and her social standing perhaps or her moral judgment and those that didn't get sent to a husband and they were punished. So between the two of them, you can see why um, the poorer community would have resented both of them. But I don't see why there's the Nine of Cups here. Because that's um, a happy ever after, happy ending kind of thing. So I don't know why that's there. <clears throat> The Five of Pentacles comes through here, which again comes is very accurate and very descriptive of the social standing of the very poor, the poor, the society of 
of class was very very strong in that time in the UK and probably still is so it was the poor then it was the working class the middle class then the upper class and the poor were poor I tell you and had no sort of um, incentive to actually go out there and work because the jobs they had were either um, in the working class um, which were hard to get into without the skills, without the the um, um, the enthusiasm, probably. The working class, of course, oftentimes whoever was in the working class wanted to look up to becoming part of the middle class. So they, the women would often marry into someone of the of an upper class if they could if they could but getting from the middle class to the upper class well there was that distinction where you just couldn't get there and then you had the opportunities were sometimes there weren't there but then you had the devil coming through here and the devil well you know what the devil does the devil takes care of its own the devil takes and takes away opportunities and replaces it with um dread replaces it with Loss of, loss of opportunities so the opportunities were there but the devil would come along and the devil for drink the devil of um, falling back into old habits would certainly take its place and then the wheel of fortune was virtually what happened to you was a matter of fate if you if you worked your way up and got out of debt and got into a better position but there was no way really to change class it's all a matter of fate. Um, so I think that's what's really happened with Caroline. She was murdered by someone. She's in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was being very judgmental perhaps. It was the last straw and the camel's back or the donkey's back, whatever it was. And pow. But to be violent, to be shot twice, that is not a necessity. So what they're thinking, what the police were thinking at that time is that there were two um, <clears throat> culprits and each shot her. That way one couldn't um, dob on the other. So if either way, each if one dobbed, they would be dobbed in at the same time. So it was sort of they shot each other, shot her once each. Um, who knocked her on the head? Who was she trying to change? Who was the most annoyed with her? Hit her on the head. She may have woken up and recognised them. Then the choice was, do we shoot her? Mm. Well, you shoot her once and I'll shoot her once and then we can be the end of it and we blame the husband. <laughs> He'll get blamed anyway. The husband always does. Um, and perhaps that's what happened. And that's virtually what came through the book. But I want to at the ending. So is that what happened to Caroline? Is that what happened to Caroline? Is that what really happened? So did the vagrants... Did the vagrants um, murder Caroline? Did the vagrants murder her? It was all much of a... Up to, up to the gods, really, up to destiny, what happened. Because that, oh my goodness, the demon drink. <laughs> and I think, was that the time of the Temperance League too? Maybe Caroline was part of the Temperance League. And maybe that's why this guy didn't appreciate that, because he loved his drink. Um, maybe the Temperance League came through. Hmm... So the vagrants, all opportunities would be lost. Like if you didn't turn up for up to work because you were drunk and had a hangover, you'd lose that opportunity, wouldn't you? But if you could marry into an upper class and higher class than what you you were, like if you were um, living in in the slums, but you married someone who perhaps owned a shop for example, that would change your destiny. It would change the way society saw you. You'd be upper class. Well, not upper class. You'd be up a 
class from where you were. Um, and there are a lot of people too in the middle class that actually resented Caroline. They resented her, um, her where she where she was socially. But the feeling is is that she was killed in the wrong place at the wrong time. So, did the vagrants kill her? But why the nine of cards? Nine of clubs, nine of cups. I don't know why that was there. Did the vagrants kill her? Yes, the seven of cups. <laughs> Choices come through here. They had the choice. They could have just run away, couldn't they? They didn't have to um, hit her. I mean, kill her. Yes, she, they would have been up for assault, and they probably would have gone to jail. Um, but being caught for murder meant hanging it was a hangable offense so they had the choices here they yes they took the wrong choice they shot her i think it's what's come through the story and comes through the information that there was two of them they both shot her so they were both as um liable for the offense as the other um because that's the choice that they made so it's coming through here but that, I suppose the nine of nine of um, cups comes through as well. They got what they wanted. They got rid of her and they got rid of of Charles. So um, they were probably feeling quite pleased with themselves in that aspect. But when they thought about it, I suppose they had other choices. Then what are they going to do? They could have run away. They could have left her there. Yes, she would have may have recognised them. If, had she recognised them, she may not have. Um, but they chose to shoot her. Hmm, why did they want to do that? Why did they want to do that? Don't know. So, that was over a hundred years ago, <laughs> long time, long time ago. So, are uh, Charles and Caroline um, reunited? Um, in uh, has Caroline and Charles? Reunited in the spirit realm. Have they reunited in the spirit realm? Have they reunited? <laughs> yes. Yes, they were seeking each other. Charles Sauter, he was devastated after she died. He was devastated and he was always looking for her, looking for for where she was, where she could be, and he wanted to be with her, and yes, they were reunited, um, they were looking for her, he was looking for her, and they reunited, oh yes, that sort of happy conclusion, spiritually, but not so much in the public um, eye, because he was blamed, and even even though the, the case was dropped, I mean, they had the potential to be solved. It was there. I could, I could see that. But the what happened changed that. And so it went unsolved. And, and Charles was blamed by society for killing his wife um, wrongly. I would... I, even reading through the facts, I would say it was wrongly accused. He was accused by um, public. He was not fairly tried. Um, there was actually no trial. There was just an investigation, but no trial, um, because that all ended and unsolved. But I do believe what the police did believe and, and what... Uh, Minette Waters um, did conclude in her story too that the two of them did conspire to kill her after they beat her sub to submission virtually um, on the steps of the summer house. And the summer house was here, the poor were here, and the poor could see the summer house, and it was magnificent, you know, could have put ten families in that house and here the um, the families were living in poverty and only given charity with restrictions um, do as I do, not as I say 
do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> sort of thing. And um, a lot of resentment had built up, I think. And um, I do believe that Caroline may have witnessed something that one of them was doing, called him to um, to to um, hand on it, called him to um, to what do you call it? Called him out on it. He resented that, so he hit her. And then both of them decided to shoot her. That way they're both to blame. And one could not blame the other without incriminating himself. So that's what I think happened. So it's interesting. Um, so have you ever come across any true crime, especially unsolved true crime? Um, it's in, always interesting to just to get the tarot cards out and just do what I did and just sort of muck around with them, see what comes up. Um, I mean, a lot of that was what I've concluded too, but the cards seem to support me. So it seems to be what what I've deduced from the story, from what the facts, the facts are more important than the story, of course. This is a story of the facts, but the facts... Um, are very much very similar to what's in the book but Minette um, came to her own conclusions and same conclusion that I've come to here as well and the cards have supported that conclusion so <clears throat> but this is very interesting the six of um, swords so if you find out what happened to Charles you will understand what journey he made and you will, you will understand why that one is significant and of course whatever else is coming through here at the moment um, is what some cards are a bit I think, hmm, why is that there? <laughs> why is that there? But, you know I don't know I might clarify that card what do you reckon? I'm going to clarify the Nine of Cups, please, Caroline can you can you clarify the Nine of Cups? Let me clarify the Nine of Cups. Why is that there? Who would be happy for your death? No one would be happy for your death. Um, except for maybe the bad guys, but maybe they're happy because they got away with it. Maybe that's what it is. They got away with it. Um, and the police didn't hound them anymore. The police didn't even try to look for them. They tried looking for them, but they didn't... Um, um, arrest them for anything and certainly weren't hung maybe they were happy because they got away with it and that's what it is they got away with it and they didn't have to put up with Caroline's um, judgement anymore she couldn't change them anymore she got rid of Charles as well, you understand what that means um, as well when you find out what happened to Charles um And clarify that the Ten of Diamonds comes down again to money. Ten of Diamonds is about money, but it's about money that's usually earned honestly and for hard work. Maybe they thought it was worth worth the price they paid. Getting rid of her was worth the price they paid. Because they didn't actually pay anything, did they? They got away with it. So, maybe that's what it means. Interesting. I don't know if I'm going to go through any more cards. Maybe you can give me some ideas about why do you think the Nine of Hearts, Nine of Cups is there, but it's just the Nine of Hearts. Nine of Cups is there. And the Ten of um, Pentacles, which means reward and hard-earned um, right to be content and they had no right to be content did they and however much they resented it she did give them money but they had to change their lifestyle to suit her um, demands and they wouldn't do that because the devil was here and the devil is such a strong personality and it's sometimes so very, very hard 
to ignore the devil isn't it sometimes it's very hard to give up uh, obsessions to give up addictions to give up a way of life even if the payment um would um suspend that for a while sometimes it's so very very hard to do that so maybe they think it was worth worth the effort worth the time the trouble to end up killing her mm. anyway guys thank you for listening to me i hope that was interesting for you and um yeah and until next time guys so many blessings and i'm glad that charles and caroline were back together <laughs> so thank you very much and until next time so many blessings <laughs>